Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatore, and Lucy Easton, also here. Um, although this today is more in the capacity of Eastern Antique Arms rather than Scholar Gladiatoria, technically speaking. So I'm quite well known, aren't I, Lucy, for saying that I'll make a. a bit... <laughs> Sorry, just I'm quite well known as a standalone <laughs> statement is is funny. I, I, Carry am, on. I am known for saying in my videos that I will make a video about that thing in the future. How are you? I? I don't yes. really watch them. Are they good? You do watch my videos, I hear you. I read the comments. <laughs> um, and uh, so, but this is one of those videos where I do actually get round to making the further video that I said I'm going to make. Um, now, some of you who watch the channel uh, a lot may remember this sword. Um, so this is a um, Bengal um, cavalry. It's called Bengal Regiment Cavalry. So it's a Bengal uh, light cavalry officer's sword, pipe back blade. And I'm going to dispense with the scabbard, actually, because we're not going to be doing anything with the scabbard um, today. I'm just trying to find somewhere that you, you have a look is, at that Is sword that fodder for a third exciting sword cleaning video, the scabbard? No, I think we did the scabbard last time. Doesn't look really... <laughs> did we not do a very good job? No, it was covered in rust, so oh, okay. I think we did. Okay. Right, so That's as fine. you can see, the blade of this is um, pretty damn good. Um, the blade was protected pretty well by the scabbard. So what we did in the last video, primarily, was cleaning the blade. Um, and it was mostly dirty. Do you remember? It looked really brown and gunky. You don't remember. It looked really brown and gunky. Um, and it looked rusty, I think, on camera. And I think Lucy thought it was rusty, but it wasn't. It was just dirty. I've spoken about this in the past, that sometimes antique swords, in um, when you see them in auction or um, on on dealers websites can look like they're in a rough state but once you get used to spotting the telltale signs of rust versus patina versus dirt um, you can notice some swords are just dirty they just need a damn good clean and now um, in the case of this sword it had been stuck in some type of horrible greasy stuff well I say horrible but that had looked exactly. after it hadn't it yeah. so this the surface of this um, is Un, what I would describe as unpitted, that is, it hasn't had the effects of rust eating into, corroding into the steel. Um, it's in very nice, smooth, unpitted uh, condition. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. And we didn't have to do an awful lot to it. Uh, we cleaned it with Autosol, okay? Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, here's that. I've actually got two things of it here. Um, this is, uh, this is Autosol. Uh, you can buy it on places like Amazon or eBay and um, it's primarily, well it's, it's metal polish um, but it's slightly abrasive so it's mostly for hard metals like steel okay and yes it is slightly abrasive and some people might disagree with using autosol I wouldn't use autosol on some things, I wouldn't use it on brass for example although I do know that in uh, car restoration people do use this on chrome I personally would have thought chrome was a little bit on the soft side for autosol but anyway steel as you know is pretty hard especially blade steel um, so I've got no qualms using autosol but you can be more gentle with it if you are literally more gentle with it you, you it will be more abrasive the harder you and longer you rub so you can go light with autosol or you can go heavier with it um, buffing with cloth, buff, uh, cloth buffing wheels have, have, a lot to, um, have a lot to be said for them. But what we're going to look at today and what we said we would look at in the next video, and this is the next video, I think... A year later? Maybe a year later, <laughs> yeah, Hence like I that. can't really remember the previous sword. But we do get around to it, is cleaning the hilt. Now, the hilt is a somewhat different story. That is rusty, right? Yeah, so it does have surface rust. Uh, but I don't think it's deep. It's not deep for us. It doesn't appear corroded. It doesn't look lumpy. It doesn't look lumpy bumpy. It doesn't have um, visible pits in the steel. Although there will be, anywhere you get rust, there will be some degree of pitting underneath, but it could just be incredibly light pitting. Um, but there is definitely surface rust there. And the reason there was some on the um, hilt and on the scabbard is obviously because that's exposed to the air. And usually what happens is um, these things are put in somewhere like an attic or a, uh, a shed, somewhere like that, where there's moisture in the air and they stay cold and so moisture in the air condensates on the cold surface of them. And so scabbards and, and hilts attract moisture which forms a light surface layer of rust. In this case it appears to not be too 
damaged because we can see that there's some detail lines down here. Unfortunately, we probably won't it won't focus because it's trying to focus on Lucy's <laughs> face. Let's block your face out. Block your face out. There we go. Uh, is it, I don't know whether it's focusing on the sword or not, but there we go. Um, this camera always wants to focus on faces, and hilariously, I can see at the moment, it only wants to focus on Lucy's face and not mine. Maybe my face doesn't register as a face to computers. I don't know. It could be glasses on. I don't know. I could, it could be really useful if I want to be a spy or something, if I don't register as having a face. But anyway, um, <laughs> that was a bit weird, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> you you crack on. So <laughs> this is this has got rust and shit. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna clean the rust off now. How do you clean rust off? Well, there are so many ways you can clean rust off something. Is the answer autosol again? No. Oh, is it brasso? Because <laughs> that's on the table. You could have said about ten different things, and autosol wasn't the answer. So autosol is essentially for polishing a cleaned surface. If you've got rust, you've got to remove uh, the corrosion. But after it's gone, can we use the autosol? Mm, I mean, you could, but we probably won't ever use. Then why is it on, on the, the table? Hands. Because I was talking about autosol for the oh, blades. Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen the previous video, obviously I'll put a link to the previous video below this one. I'll if watch you haven't it. Seen that. Good. And you can see what you looked like a year ago. <laughs> oh, don't. There we go. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we're going to clean this off. Now, there are several ways you can clean rust off something. There wire are, wool. Yes, so wire wool is one way. Okay, so that is one of the most common ways. So wire wool, sometimes known as steel wool. Uh, I'm not sure if it is technically steel. It might be iron wool, actually. Um, the only difference being carbon content. But anyway, it's softer than the thing that you're buffing ideally. Now you can get, if you're worried about scratching a surface, you can get bronze, uh, what's known as bronze wool, which is the same as this but made in bronze, which is um, supposedly slightly softer again. In fact, bronze isn't necessarily softer than iron. Um, so, but nevertheless, people do, do sometimes use bronze wool. So we've got wire wool, aka steel wool, We've got a, um, a, a pad, a scourer, a scourer. I, I, someone on my channel, or a few people told me what this is called in, um, a, a scrubby, that's it. In Australia, this type is known as a green scrubby. That's a, a green, green salt. A green scrubby. Uh, that's my attempt at an Australian accent there. I love Australian accents, by the way. Um, and these come in different grades. This, incidentally, is one which was sent to me with an Albion sword by Albion, so I assume this is Albion approved. Um, <laughs> and I have to say that this grey one is slightly softer than this green one. I don't really know. I mean, they, they're essentially like wire wool, okay? They're, they're a type of wire, but I, I don't really know what they're made of. Um, but there we go. What? Sorry. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Do you care? Comments below. <laughs> anyway, you can get different types of scourers, and uh, these are usually for cleaning pots and pans, incidentally. So you can buy these in a hardware store or in a supermarket. They're easy to get hold of. Wire wool you can buy in hardware stores. It's usually used for um, doing things like removing paint from things that you're refurbishing and uh, stuff like that. So, so what, can, what, what are we using first? Uh, hold on, I haven't gone right the way through the list. You can, also clean, you can also clean rust with chemical means, so there are chemical rust removers. I've experimented with two different types and they were extremely different from each other. One type was a liquid, uh, a syrupy type liquid, um, that I filled a tube up with and suspended a blade in for about 24 hours and it did the job, it did pretty well. One of the downsides to chemical rust removers is they tend to discolour the steel, discolour the whatever metal you're, well, it's always going to be iron or steel with rust. Um, they discolour it and leave it with a grey matte finish, which you then have to sort of buff. And you always seem to have this discoloured surface. So there are disadvantages. That being said, if you've got a surface like a blade which has extensive etching on it, then clearly... If you're doing anything abrasive or scouring on the etching, it's going to damage and remove the etching. So in some cases, and that's why I used it on this specific sword, uh, where you've got etching that you want to protect, a, rust, a chemical rust remover might be the only way to go. And just as I mentioned, I used another type as well, and the other type was a gel. And I bought that from uh, Halfords for people in the UK, so it's for use on uh, cars. Uh, for removing rust off, I think, localized, pretty much localised areas. And rather than it being a liquid that you suspend the thing in, it's a gel that you smear all over the area and then leave it there. That didn't work very well. 
I don't know why, I don't know if it's because the rust remover is not so good, or I didn't leave it long enough, or it was a different kind of rust. And that's the other thing to say, is you do get different levels of rust and types of rust. And I have found rust to conform on things which have dirt uh, on them. So if you have a dirty piece of steel that then gets rust on it, the dirt almost performs a protective layer between the metal and the rust, and it makes it easier to remove the rust. Uh, and some rust seems very deep, some rust, it, rust comes in different colours and can be very, very hard, almost immobile in some cases. Red rust, which this is, it's kind of light brown colour, it seems to be the most easily treatable and the most easily removable, and it's what I would refer to as light rust. I never thought I could waffle on for so long about <laughs> rust and rust removal. Right. I knew. So what are we, oh, and one final thing, this is a brush, okay? This is a brass brush. Now these are usually used for cleaning suede, um, suede shoes and boots, okay? Really? Yeah, you can buy these in uh, any place that they have uh, things like leather, uh, you know, like boot polish or, or shoelaces and stuff like that. Well, it's fairly soft. So the good thing about a brass brush is the bristles are metal, of course, so they remove stuff from the suede, but they, they don't really damage the suede that much. Um, they sort of just kind of scour slightly the, the surface. Interesting. Now that, I have found, is really quite useful at removing relatively light rust from rusty surfaces. So which one first? So what we're going to do, do is thing. we're actually going to experiment. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is hold the sword up like that. Don't be worried about handing blades when you're working on a sword, so long as you remember to uh, wipe the blade down at the end and remove your greasy fingerprints off it. I want you to give me your commentary on what effect this has on oh, I this grass brush. I thought you I was going to do the things. You will, hold on. So, rusty surface, yeah? Okay. Obviously, Lucy, because she's a lot closer to me and closer to the sword. Uh, not just emotionally, but <laughs> physical physically. proximity. Um, she'd be able to see a greater level of detail than I could ever show you on the camera, unfortunately. But so that on there. That's very effective. So what's happening? It's it's scratched the rust off. Basically, yes. Yeah. It's like brushing the rust off now. It's a fun game. Job done. <laughs> Over. A scratchy Bye, brush. <laughs> Let's just try. So this, incidentally, wire wool comes in different grades. I mentioned you could get bronze wire wool, which is probably one of the lightest. I think you can get aluminium wire wool as well, actually, but I've never seen it. It's or not used very nice it. to hold, though, wire wool. It's not very nice to hold, and if it gets all over the floor and you walk on it, it can get little in your spikies. Feet. It's horrible. Mm. Um, but this is fine wire wool. It comes in different grades, basically. If you're doing a test, you have to do it in a different place. Okay, different place. Right, I'm not applying oil, but you can do, but you don't need to. It's looking like more effort for a similar result. Ooh, maybe a slightly more effective result, actually. It's going over where he did it before now. You can, of course, use two, two things at different stages. They, okay, they seem to do basically the same thing to me, but this is slightly easier to use because it's got a handle on it, basically. Um, what are your thoughts, Lucy? Um, that has removed ever so slightly more, but you pushed harder and I think maybe did it for a little bit longer. Let's have a go. So one other thing to mention about the brass brush is it leaves a slightly goldy colour behind on the steel or iron. Um, it's quite pretty. But don't worry about that because it just it brushes off. So if you do the brass brush first and then go over it with the steel wool, then the steel wool will remove the goldy colour that the brass brush has left behind. Now, I find that far easier to use because it's got a handle on it and because it's got a hard backing behind the, the bristles. So you can kind of get into angles and kind of apply more pressure. Do you want to have a go, Luce? Yes. There you go. Do you want me to hold the sword? You can. It might, or do you want to hold it? It might be more visually accessible. I'll just sit here and be pretty. 
You're very good at that. Oh, I'm better than you. Look. Look, I win. Right. It's not. There's less rust in this area, but it makes it look like my job is more impressive. So, uh, another thing, when you're doing any of these types of jobs, it will create dust and detritus in the air. Because it's relatively, ugh, I'm inhaling some of it, it's horrible. It has, um, it's a bit like tasting blood in your mouth, because of course, blood tastes of iron, and iron tastes of iron, and this is iron oxide. So, it's the oxidisation of iron. And, um, ugh. It's all, for some reason, going in your... I don't know how that's yeah. happening. I'm inhaling it. Um, it's okay. I'm gonna House get, is full of inhalers. I'm going to get high on iron oxide or whatever it is. Bad Rust, science. basically. <laughs> it's working pretty well, though. It's, uh, I, I don't know how much. Do you want to hold it close to so they can see? Uh, I, I very much doubt, unfortunately, because of the lighting that you'll be if able you to see. If you imagine a there. thing that's rusty and then imagine a thing that's a lot less rusty, that, that's what this is like. Now, what's interesting is there is a dark surface underneath the rust, and I think that that's probably original bluing. Now, one of the drawbacks, of course, to cleaning the rust off is, to some extent, you're going to abrade and slightly damage the bluing that's underneath the rust, but there's, n there's no real way around that because you've got to clean the rust off, and the only two ways of cleaning the rust off are with some form of abrasion or with a chemical, and both of those things are going to have some effect, but... You can re-blue stuff though, can't you? You could re-blue stuff. Uh, oh, I'm really inhaling a lot of this stuff. You could re-blue it, but... Uh, right, stop. So, leather washer, okay? Stay away from... Stay away from that leather washer. So this sword luckily has the leather washer fully intact and in place. Remember, brass bristles are not going to harm the steel of the guard, but they will harm the steel, uh, the potentially harm the leather washer. But that being said, this is designed for cleaning suede boots and shoes, so it's not going to damage it that easily. But if you just sit there and rub it for days, that is very old leather. This sword dates to about 1850, so um, no, in fact, earlier than that, about 1840. So yeah, there we go. Can I have another go? Yeah. Did you have a go with the wire wall? You didn't, you did. Uh, no, honestly, I'm not like a massive fan of holding wire wall. It's not really nice handling, it has to be no. said. This that, that's just way easier. So we've done, obviously, quite a lot of things like this in the past, and, and whilst wire wool is effective, I'm definitely a fan of the shiny new brush technique. Oh, that dust is horrible though, isn't it? It's not really bothering me, actually. Maybe I'm breathing too much. <laughs> problematic breathing. I'm sure some people out there think I'm breathing way too much. <laughs> <laughs> what do they know? Um, it's looking good. I think that's an original blued surface. Look at that. That's not just discoloration from... Well, the thing is that you've, you know, obviously I've seen a lot of these, but you've seen and studied much more closely even more. It, it doesn't look terribly blue to me, but... Ah, oh, but blued means like a gun barrel. I, I know. Yeah. Do you know why that's done? Do you guys know why that's done? I would... You should know. I would have imagined that it was in order for it to be more durable. But... Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, so ironically, it's to slightly make the thing more rust resistant. <laughs> so here we are cleaning rust off something that's in blue. In fairness, it was cleaned off quite easily. Yeah, that is true. And, you know, but that's the main reason that gun barrels are uh, blued is, is because it makes them slightly more resistant to corrosion. Not just um, from rust, from uh, moisture, but also from, originally, from gunpowder as well, because gunpowder is highly... Um, <laughs> both well placed my <laughs> uh, Yeah, gunpowder is very um, corrosive to, to steel, which is why when you look at antique firearms, you'll often find that they have more pitting near the muzzle and around the um, the breech if it is a breech loader. Um, for those reasons, because that they're the areas where you get the most residue build up from um, from shooting. So that's actually cleaning off really well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we're not probably not going to do a complete... Do you want to do that around there? Mm -hmm. We're probably not going to do the complete job on camera because you don't need to sit there and watch the whole of it. I'm sure it's fascinating watching two people in uh, the southeast of England 
brushing a sword <laughs> I keep I keep inhaling the It's funner than it looks if you like uh, keep inhaling that dust um, you're inhaling tiny bits of bronze bronze brass I'm becoming one with the sword <laughs> I, I'm, I'm literally swallowing history here um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so <laughs> don't know where to go now. <laughs> there, are, there is no nowhere good to go. Yeah, the other advantage of the bristles of the brush is they tend to get into nooks and crannies. And in other words, yes, you achieve better penetration with them uh, due to the rigidity of your of your lever. Um, right, careful of the shagreen. Right, we're going to talk about the shagreen in a minute. Um, so, for I'm anyone, do this bit. yeah, just try not to brush the shagreen. So, shark skin. Yeah. So, for those of you who uh, don't know, shagreen is a general term applied to shark skin and or ray skin. Now, ray skin and shark skin are different, and are used um, on different swords at different times in different places. So I believe what's normally found on a Japanese sword, for example, is ray skin, I believe. Not uh, ray skin. Not ray our lizard's <laughs> skin. Oh god, that's a horrible thought. I <laughs> don't like it. Although he probably would make quite a good sword grip covering. No. Um, uh, yeah, so ray skin is more knobbly and sharper. Um, and this is shark skin, which is a little... The nodules are smaller and it's less abrasive. But Royal Navy swords, for example, do use the big knobbly ray skin and it's sort of lighter coloured. Question. Yes. Question. This, do -do 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 -do. Yeah. this bit around here. Yes. I'll do that. That me because you want to. Just because I've done them before and there's a bit of a knack to them. I just think that if you try and do that, that so there's like a so, groove around the edge of where the shark Right, is so going. when I, I show this, hopefully you'll be able to see some of this on camera. So where you have here the shagreen or shark skin, obviously that is actually really tough stuff. So you don't have to worry too much about it, but we don't really want to be scratching at it with a brass brush. Uh, but if you get the edge of the sharp, the sharp brush, uh, brass brush, that's it. If you get the edge the of it here, brush and you get, just get the edge and you let it go into, meet up against the edge, not quite going onto the shagreen. Um, a bit like painting, a bit like, you know, painting a straight line along, along something. We yeah. can do the inside. No, 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 we'll get to that. But um, So just try and do it along the groove. Now, if you are nervous about doing that at all, you can, of course, switch to a different material. You can switch to the wireball and you can literally just get your thumb into that groove and clean it like but that. But you do get little tiny bits of wire wool stuck underneath your You head. don't, so, I have to say you don't so much with the fine wire ball. It's less, it's less mean to your hands. Um, that, that's not me being a wimp, it really does get spiky. Just having a go at the back strap here. The back strap I think is a little bit more pitted than the guard, isn't it? I'm not sure why, but... Hmm. Notice I'm going up and down on this, but you can, of course, if I just change the angle of the sword, you can, of course, go across it that way as well. And it's probably a good idea to do both because then you're sort of cross-hatching the abrasion, as it were, so you're more likely to get uh, more sort of the corrosion removed, uh, rust removed. Um, and you can also sometimes get up to certain edges more easily. Now. One thing you do want to be careful of, if you, you'll notice, is on these hilts, um, when you've got shagreen, you've also got wire um, binding around the grip. Now, the wire is made of copper, in this case. Sometimes it's silver, actual silver. Um, now, obviously, that is much softer than the iron of the hilt, and indeed, it's more liable to damage than the shagreen of the grip as well. So you want to be super careful you don't start um, kind of gr essentially grinding on that with this. Stay away from that wire because that, that will do horrible things to that wire relatively quickly. Um, so yeah, so be careful. Anyway, the, the back strap is, is underway. Um, we've re removed quite a lot of the surface rustled here. I'm fairly certain that that's original bluing uh, remaining in there. It has got a bluey hue to it and it's quite smooth. It's not, it's not pitted under there at all actually. So we're lucky in that regard. The back strap's not quite as good. The back strap is a little bit pitted and it's got some kind of um, build up of corrosive material on there. Um, do you want to have a go at just cleaning around the end of that quill on? Let's just see. 
Yeah, the quill on seems to be quite. You're gonna hold this over. Right. Yeah. There we go. So the rear quill on, uh, obviously a vis vestigial sort of part of older styles of sword hilt is there theoretically to prevent. Uh, things sliding down the back of your blade onto your wrist or back of your thumb even. Um, I also just think that they make the hilt look more balanced and make it look better. I always find sabres which don't have a rear quill on look a little bit one-sided. I disagree. Mm. I don't. I don't feel like that. Um, phew, that dust. It's always when you're doing it. <laughs> it goes in my direction. Um, when you watch back the video, you will see that that is not the case. No. You did make the complaint when you did it. Right, so... No, no, it's not done. No, no. So just to reiterate, we're not going to do... We're probably not going to do, you know, finish the whole hilt on camera. So Lucy's just cleaning the inside of the guard, which is always more tricky to get to than the outside of the guard. Um, also, because it bulbs inwards, for some reason it seems to be harder to sort of clean than, than, thing, than clean the outside of the bend. It is more fiddly, isn't it? Yeah. You like the brass brush then? You prefer it to wire ball? Yeah, definitely, next time. Now I should we'll mention, so we haven't used the scrubbies at all, um, or brillos. Uh, but we could have done, uh, and the Brillos would do pretty much the same thing. My it depends on the Brillo, but my opinion is that Brillos are a little bit, a little bit more brutal than wire wool is. But it, again, it depends on the wire wool, depends on the Brillo. So if you're using some type of abrasive pad like this, I would suggest you to get um, to get two or three different ones and experiment with them because, for example, this green one is very much more brutal than this grey one. Um, and of course, because we're not using them for what they're originally intended for, there's no guidance on, you know, you could go and go, I will buy a number four Brillo for, to clean my sword, please. It doesn't work like that. You just have to buy a bunch and, and then just experiment with which ones are better for which jobs. Uh, Dumb question. What, yeah. What would happen if you got, like, wet, dry sandpaper and tried to do it really gently <laughs> with that? Or would you just scratch the hell out of it? Yes. <laughs> Don't use wet and dry sandpaper. Uh, unless you know what you're doing and what you're doing requires wet and dry sandpaper. So wet and dry sandpaper certainly has a place in sword making, sword polishing, sword sharpening even. You can sharpen very well with wet and dry sandpaper. But for an antique that's in pretty good condition, never ever use wet and dry sandpaper on any part of it, even the scabbard. Okay, it's way too brutal. Um, and you put scratches into that surface which honestly you'd need to be a very experienced polisher to bring those scratches out. Um, so yeah, just never put sandpaper anywhere near. I just didn't use whatever you passed me. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she's useful like that. I just kind of give her a little brush or something and, and she sits there and cleans things for me. It's great. You quite enjoy it though, don't you? Yes. Um, you've cleaned a few rusty tulwars in your time, haven't you? I love tulwars. <laughs> They're brilliant. But you, like, you seem to prefer them the rustier they are as well. Yeah, I don't like them when they're super shiny. Yeah, it's, um, Lucy doesn't like the shiny swords, she likes the swords that look old. And sometimes I get a sword that's in amazingly good condition and I'm all excited about it and she's like, nah, it's too shiny. <laughs> and it makes me sad. And so and then, oh, no. then I have to make videos about that sword. <laughs> Showing it off so that you guys go, wow, that sword's really nice, so that I feel okay about my life again. <laughs> but rusty swords can be made to look to, can be made to look less rusty, but they're never going to look shiny. But shiny swords look more like replicas sometimes. It's not that they're not nice swords. That's just how I feel. I I, could say I love all your shiny swords, <laughs> and it's just a joke. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, so. We've already been doing this bit for a long time on camera, and as I said, we don't need to show you all of that because it's a simple yeah, process, and you've seen and you've seen what it's all about. Um, so I'm gonna before we um, sort of wind things up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about cleaning the grips. Now, obviously, grips are a little bit more sensitive because they're made of more delicate materials. So first things first. Um, if you've got dirt stuck in crevices, and you often do have all sorts of gunk stuck in there, I actually don't have one to hand, 
uh, but a toothpick, okay? So a wooden, or in some cases plastic, if that's what, you, what floats your boat, um, but a, a, a wooden or plastic pointy thing. If you don't have a toothpick, but you've got a piece of wood, just sharpen a little bit of wood. That will do exactly the same job. Um, and you can dig out. I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't have any in my box here. No, I don't. Um, I do, I mean, I do obviously own some, but I just don't have any to hand at the moment. And you can, you can just dig out, but the reason you're using wood or plastic is obviously because it's not going to damage any of the metal or shagreen because it's not strong enough to damage it. An old it. earring, because it's thin but blunt. Yeah, but it's metal. I would, I would urge you not to use metal objects as far as possible when you're cleaning shagreen or grip wire. Right, next up is the trusty old toothbrush. That's right, so never throw toothbrushes away. They're super useful if you like restoring or cleaning things anywhere in the house. Um, and uh, just doing this with a toothbrush will indeed get dirt out of nooks and crannies. It's very gentle. You're not going to damage anything at all uh, that we've got um, going on down here on this hill. Now what's interesting, Lucy, can you, you tell the people what's happening to that wire as I use the toothbrush on it? You can't see anything. Um, Am I meant to say it's getting shinier? Yes. Okay, I think I, I thought that that was the, the light. Right, look at, look at that wire below okay, there. Okay, you do the okay. second wire. So we look at I'll the wire down here. So look at how the wire is at the moment. Okay. And as if by magic, it is indeed shinier. Right, so that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bristles have a very, very mildly abrasive effect, just the same as they clean your teeth. But additionally, old used toothbrushes, what do you think they have left in them? Toothpaste. <laughs> Toothpaste. That's and, not used. Uh, pretty sure it is. This is one I salvaged. But anyway, that's not important to the video. Um, toothpaste is in itself a very uh, effective, mild cleaning agent. And you can clean all sorts of things with toothpaste. Um, and so, yeah, so that, so that will work. Now, I'm not recommending you to slap toothpaste on your chagrin, so to speak, um, but it will clean it, but just make sure you clean any toothpaste off afterwards. The other thing we should mention is, as far as possible, avoid getting oil on the grip, on the chagrin, the wood, and, or, or, or the wire, and avoid getting water on there, okay? There are some things that you have to make a little bit moist to clean them, but don't let them get properly wet because when things get wet, the old glues that we use to glue them to the wood start to break down. Uh, they can expand and lift and ripple and this kind of stuff. So just avoid getting moisture or especially oil uh, because some oils will actually break down um, wood even, okay? Uh, things like ballastol are less harmful. Ballastol is okay on most organic materials. Um, but, but other oils, penetrating oils, and I think WD-40 are not very good for, for uh, things like this. Now, whilst that cleans, whilst the toothbrush does clean a little bit uh, and would get uh, sort of dirt out of nooks and crannies, and is even useful incidentally on the metal components, so cleaning around the, where the ferrule meets the um, guard, for example, just getting the general dust and detritus out of there, and it does no damage to anything with this. You're completely safe using this for all of that kind of stuff. Um, if we really want to clean up this wire, um, then there is one very good option. So that wire is made of copper, okay? Therefore, we can completely use something that is in design for cleaning copper alloys, and that is Brasso. Um, Brasso is not harmful at all. Obviously, if this was silver wire, then you're best advised not to use Barso, but to use the equivalent. I think silver o. It's, it's sil <laughs> silver, or whatever it's called. The silver equivalent, or, or whatever silver polish you happen to use. But this is a copper copper wire or copper, copper alloy wire, so we can use Barso. So you My just bet. yeah. So you just get your well. I'll just show you first how it's very very simple. You just get a little bit out, and you just rub up and down the. Uh, groove. Now, what's interesting, because these are impregnated with this uh, sort of um, this that's very slightly damp uh, chemical, it does actually, I have found, clean the shagreen as well as polishing the um, copper wire. And I have never noticed 
any harm coming to any chagrin as a result of of this um, of this brasso. So it works really, really well. You can see. There we go. Lucy can do the. Um, do you want me to hold that one? So, so yeah. So brasso is super effective at cleaning sword grips. Won't do any harm that I've ever observed to chagrin. It might be a bit weird on leather, I have to say. I can't remember having done it on leather, but on shagreen it doesn't seem to do any harm whatsoever. And, moreover, it seems to actually quite be quite good at cleaning the shagreen. Um, so you just go, just do each individual strand at a time. As you can see, Lucy's just focus on one strand going around. And once you've cleaned that on both sides, move up to the next ridge and do the next strand all around. Um, you can get it into, with your fingers, into all of the nooks and crannies. Um, it's easy. It's an easy job you can do anywhere in the, in the house, in, inside or outside. Requires All it requires is a tin of brasso, which is useful stuff. I imagine a lot of you already have this in your house anyway. Right, so as Luce is doing that, I'm going to talk about the final stage of cleaning the grip. What you would ideally have is something like this um, cloth, um, cleaning cloth, that is relatively clean and doesn't have oil from blades and stuff like this on it. So for example, this I keep one for using with Brasso and Silvo, so this one, and I keep another for using with oil on steely things. That This might pick up gunk from, from oil and um, things like WD-40 and stuff, this doesn't. This only has the stuff from cleaning leather and uh, Brasso on it, okay, which are equally as inoffensive to each other. So what we're going to do, just to see, uh, just before we wrap up, um, obviously we'll spend a bit more time on this off camera. Yellow. So yeah, it's, remember which one's which, you, you can usually see from the detritus actually on the cloth. And then literally all you do is you just buff on top of the where the wire and the grip is. Looking good, isn't it? That looks really good. And it, you can see it actually cleans up the shagreen as well, doesn't it? The shagreen is actually shiny now, as it should be, as it originally would have been, as well as the grip work. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Da! That's good. Looking super, super good. So we're going to continue doing a little bit of that off camera, but I hope that's been somewhat interesting. Cleaning hilts is relatively simple, it just takes a bit of time and usually the most difficult aspect of it is getting into all the nooks and crannies of the guard with whatever you're cleaning, whether you're using wire wool or some type of scrubby or brillo or a, a, a wire um, brush. And the final thing I would say about these brass brushes, because I've kind of sung the praises of them in this video, is again, just like with the, with the brillo pads, have a look at some different ones because don't ever use a steel brush on this. Make sure it's a brass brush. Sometimes you can get steel brushes that have been coated and look like a brass brush. Why? I got one once. I don't know why. That, I, I think it's so that the, I think it's so it doesn't rust. Yeah. I think it's a, like a um, kind of galvanized rust protection. Um, so make sure it's a soft brass brush um, and uh, maybe get a few and just experiment with a bit uh, with them uh, for a bit. And it's worth doing that. It's worth getting the right one because once you've got a brush that you trust and you know will do the job well without damaging something, you'll have it forever. They they don't really wear. I mean, obviously they do slightly wear out each time you use them, but you're gonna you're gonna have it for the rest of your natural life, I would imagine. So uh, get a brush that is uh, relatively soft. Um, and there we go. Who knew you could talk so much <laughs> about Brillo pads, wire wool, and, um, and brass brushes. I hope it's been somewhat interesting. Thanks to Lucy for joining me for this video. You're very welcome. It's nearly Christmas time, so, so, it's so Christmas. maybe you'll be seeing... Christmas video. Maybe you'll be seeing both of us again soon. Bye. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye. Bye.
Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.